Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome to my channel Bookables. Today I am here to share with you all of the books I read in the month of August. So for August I did really good. I read 10 books. I'm very happy with that because July was such a dreadful month for me. I think I read like five or six so it was not the best but August really I did really good and I'm very happy with it. If you don't know with my wrap-up videos I always start off with the um I always start off with talking about the books I like the least that I read that month working up to my favorite book. So let's get into it. The first book I want to talk about is a romance called Would You Rather by Allison Ashley I believe. This is a friends to lovers kind of fake marriage kind of book. I think it's about two characters named Noah and Mia and they've been best friends for forever and Mia um she has to go to dialysis like every week because she needs I think a kidney transplant I, I want to say a kidney transplant and she's on the list and she gets an opportunity to go back to college but she can't really go because she's gonna lose her job because she needs the health insurance for said dialysis and things like that. Noah decides hey you know we've been friends forever I'm gonna help you out let's just get married that way you can go to college and and you can still be on health insurance so they do just that and that's kind of how the book goes you kind of can tell that it's a friends to lovers romance you can clearly tell Noah has been pining for Mia for forever and overall it was okay I give it a three out of five it's not a romance that I would say like run out and buy right now it was just kind of a middle of the road one for me it's one that I probably will forget about in a few months even the characters names the overall kind of plot of it so it, it just wasn't the best I didn't love it as much speaking of an other romance. We have Unfixable by Tessa Bailey. This is just a random T Tessa Bailey book I read this month. Tessa Bailey is a very popular romance author that I enjoy honestly. This one, oh my gosh, I forgot the character's names. I want to say the character's name is maybe Willa. She wins a photography contest. She goes to Ireland for like a month or two and she stays at this like local Irish kind of bed and breakfast. There she meets a guy. I want to say Shane. If it's an ebook, I don't know the character. <laughs> I should write them down obviously but I don't. Anyway they kind of have a hate to love relationship. He's a Formula One racer and he's now kind of running his family's bed and breakfast because his father has just passed away and they kind of have a tumultuous relationship and it was good. It's actually a Tessa Bailey book that I have never really heard about before. It's a standalone one. She's really known for her series and I gave it a three and a half out of five. Being in Ireland I like the romance. Um, it's just kind of a typical Tessa Bailey books. That's not to say anything bad about it, but once you've read one Tessa Bailey book, you kind of get the gist of all of her books. But I mean, I enjoy them. If I'm looking for a good steamy romance time, I will turn to Tessa Bailey for sure. So three and a half out of five. I enjoyed it. Then we have one of my 22 books I wanted to read in 2022, my backlist challenge, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I read this one because it, I forget which year it was published. Everyone loved it. Overall, I didn't really enjoy it, honestly. Like, I kind of was just like, meh. I would give it a three out of five, honestly. This is a book about um, Nora and... Um, she is just not having a good time in life right now. She's just kind of unhappy. She doesn't love her job. She doesn't have any romantic prospects. She kind of broke up with the relationship that she thought was going bad. She has tumultuous relationships with her brother. Both her parents have passed away and she's just not happy. And so ugh, I don't want to spoil it, but I also feel like it's important to say it because of trigger warnings. Nora decides to trigger warnings to try to end her own life and basically what happens is she arrives in the midnight library and from there she meets the librarian and pretty much the whole book is she can choose a book from the library of a different choice she would have made like what would her life be if she would have gotten married to her fiance that she broke up with what would her life be if her and her brother got along what would her life be if she like decided to be a professional swimmer because she was a really good swimmer in high school and it's all about the choices we make in life and how it kind of shapes us and gets us right back to where you know so she like gets to try on all these different lives of choices that she made and that's what the whole book is about and it kind of is the whole thing of like <sighs> like be happy with your life and the choices that you make I don't know like it sounds like a good message right but I don't like the way they dealt with it I really like it just like it didn't deal with anxiety and depression I think in a very good way I also just didn't like I don't know I just didn't enjoy the way it was written about how it came to be about I thought it was an interesting plot but I just don't think the way it was what's the word I'm trying to for like brought about was that good so I gave it a three out of five I was not impressed by this one. Oh no, am I the one that feels that way I just feel like this book was just a big letdown I think they could have talked a lot more about mental health and depression and things like that and they could have really talked a lot more about choices and things like that but I just don't feel like it was 
written very well in that regard. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that feels that way. Speaking of my 22 books in challenge, I read another book on that list and that is also since read by Martha Wells. This is a sci-fi novella series um, and I liked it three and a half out of five. I have come to learn that I am not a sci-fi person. <laughs> this is the beginning of this year. I'm like, you know what? Sci-fi really intrigues me. I'm so interested in it. I really want to read it and I've read a few books of sci-fi this year and I just realized that it's just not the genre for me. I'm not trying to be like, I'm not that smart when it comes to science. I know that about myself. I've known that since I was young. In high school and middle school, I was horrible in the subjects of science and math, and I'm still horrible today. I do like watching sci-fi movies, and I like the overall idea of sci-fi books, but I just can't grasp them for some reason. I just can't get into them. There's been a few ex exceptions in that regard. Systems Red basically is about this murder bot, he calls himself. It's about this kind of robot that gets assigned to this these humans to kind of be their assistant and keep them safe and all that stuff, and he learns that maybe there are other murder bots that are trying to murder them all and he's like very self-aware like he has hacked the system he has feelings he knows his you know he's not a typical robot and it was hard for me to read because I don't I don't like robots I have this weird fear of robots <laughs> It's, it's like really weird. I don't know why. I just don't enjoy them. So it was interesting to read it, but it had a very good tone in this book. Like it was very funny, very humorful. I don't know if I'll finish with the novella series because I've just learned that I'm just not a sci-fi person and that is okay. That's what this whole challenge is about. Learning my really interest and in what my taste and things like that in sci-fi sadly is just kind of not one of them I think. I think a few of them yes but majority no and that's just me. Next up we have The Butcher by Jennifer Hillier. This is my is this my third book by this author? I enjoy it. It's a backlist book. Maybe I'll put it on my challenge. I don't know. But this one was a very popular one by this author and I gave it a three and a half out of five. I liked it. I didn't love it. This is about a character named Matt who inherits his grandfather's house. His grandfather is Edward Shank and he's a retired police chief and he leaves his house to his nephew um, so he can go live in a retirement home. And one day Matt hires his crew to like dig up the backyard to build a deck and they're like hey we found this weird box you know we just left it in your garage and Matt's like that's weird and so he opens it up and it's um full of some scary things. <laughs> We also have his girlfriend Sam who is like a true crime writer and she's trying to write this book about the butcher who was a serial killer that kind of terrorized where they lived at many many years ago um, and killed a lot of women until Matt's grandfather Edward Shank caught the man and um, killed him pretty much but Sam does not think that that was the real butcher. She thinks that he is still alive and still out there and also that he killed her mom. And with this book you can clearly tell who the villain is in the very beginning of the book. I'm sure even just now you can put two and two together. I did really enjoy the aspect of it like learning who the bad guy was at the beginning and you kind of see his motives and what he thought about it and how he did things. The ending I didn't I think the biggest qualm I have this book was the ending. It kind of just wasn't there for me. I wanted more of a punch and it wasn't there for me. Um, like I really enjoy her other book Jar of Hearts. That's been my favorite book I've read of her so far because the ending was really good. But overall I did enjoy this one. I do enjoy her writing style. I will say Jennifer Hiller's like books will wrap you in quickly and you'll have to finish them really fast because it's such a fast-paced read that you're just so invested in it. Next up we have Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. I read two of her books this month. This one's definitely my least favorite but gosh man I did a whole like thriller video on all the thrillers I'm talking about today if you want to hear more intensive thoughts in those. I'll link it up here and down below. She writes some really good plots. I'll say that. So this one follows a character named Adele and she is an actress. She's an Irish actress and she moves to LA because her career is not going so well. And then she gets a call to be a star in this movie, like a thriller movie that's back in Ireland. It's kind of an isolated one. The lead actress dropped out so they really need someone ASAP. And so she's like, that sounds great. I'll come out there. So she goes out there to star in the movie. She's the only female on the set and she stars in this um, movie called Final Draft and the movie um, is about two characters named Kate and Joel who are a couple that go to this secluded cabin for like a romantic getaway but then creepy things start happening when she finds a book called Final Draft there. Everything that's happening in the book that she's reading in the movie is happening to them in real life and it's just kind of odd and it's, so it's all about Adele starring in this movie. It's like a book within a movie within a book. It's kind of 
you know, it's kind of convoluted to explain. Like this book could have been so good. Like it's a book about a thriller movie being made like in an isolated, like in the middle of the woods, but it just did not deliver. The ending was meh. I thought the first half was definitely the best part of it. Like I was really enjoying it. I'm like, oh, this is so creepy, secluded, you know, but they didn't go with that vibe. They just kind of really missed the mark on that for me. So that's why I'm giving it a three and a half out of five. I just didn't love it as much as I wanted to. They could have done so so much more with the whole thriller movie being made but they just she didn't and I kind of am a little bit disappointed in it. Moving on to my four stars. The rest of the books I have today I'm talking about today are four stars. We have another Katherine Ryan Howard book The Nothing Man. I like this one the best by her. This one again so interesting. This is about a character named Eva who encounters a serial killer when she was younger called The Nothing Man who he kills her mom, her dad, and her little sister and she's the only one left unscathed. Years later she's decided to write a memoir a true crime book about the nothing man to try to find him so we have that going on we have a book within a book because also in this book we have a character named Jim who's a security guard who's you know just working at a store one day la 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 and then he finds a book on the shelf called the nothing man and he's like oh crap <laughs> because he is indeed the nothing man that's right friends we're reading a book about a serial killer reading a book about himself like ugh, that sounds so amazing doesn't it so in this book you get the full book of the nothing man by eva by eva black you can even tell like the different um pages will say it on there and then you also get jim's perspective of him reading this book and him being like crap this girl's about to find out who i am like what am i gonna do you know it's, i've been retired for so many years and i enjoyed it i gave it a four out of five the whole plot is just amazing like a book about a serial killer finding out a book by himself that he's reading like it's about him that just sounds amazing so i really enjoyed this one i'd say if you want to check out Catherine ryan howard i would definitely go with the nothing man over runtime for sure. We have Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. This is her latest book um, in her kind of STEM series. She writes a lot of about women in STEM, which again, I feel stupid because I think it's awesome. I just can't grasp it. <laughs> this will be a character named uh, B who works at NASA. She gets a job to work at NASA pretty much and to be a part of this project called Blank where it's like a helmet and like neuro. She's like a neuro engineer or something. I don't know. And she gets to be the lead of this project and then her co-lead is Levi who she's met before and he loathes her. She's like crap I gotta work with like my mortal enemy and things are happening like emails aren't getting sent right. She feels like he's sabotaging things and it's basically a hate to love romance and I really enjoyed it. A four out of five. I really enjoy Allie Hazelwood's books. I love how they feature women in STEM because that's amazing. I do feel like an idiot while reading it though like I said because they talk so much about science and science jargon that I'm like what? <laughs> So it's hard for me to understand, but I overall love her books. They're steamy, they're romantic, they're sciencey, you know, all of the many things that are amazing. Next up, we have Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter, my second Karen Slaughter book. Because my first book I read by her was Pieces of Her, and this is the sequel to <laughs> I have to take my time with Karen Slaughter, okay? She writes really dark stuff, okay? So I'm not going to try to spoil it too much because I don't want to spoil pieces of her, but basically this book follows a character that was in that book named Andrea, who is a U.S. Marshal now, and she has been assigned to protect this judge that has been getting death threats. And she's also investigating this murder that happened like 20 something years ago about this character named Emily who was a teenager and got murdered on prom night and she's trying to investigate that and so two of the stories kind of sync up it gets really grisly and gritty and I enjoyed it four out of five I really enjoy Karen Slaughter's writing you know she writes some gritty stuff this one's not as gritty I don't know as some of her others I haven't read of some of her others but I've heard them that they're really intense so I don't know which ones I'll read We'll have to see, but I did really enjoy this one and would recommend. Would I recommend reading pieces of her first? Yes, because you need backstory on the characters. Her book of the month is definitely the darkest book of the month, and that is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I'm sure you've heard this author because she wrote my favorite thriller book that I've read this year. It came out last year called In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. 
love it. So I was very excited for her newest release and it did not disappoint, but it's very, very different from her other one. This book is intense. It's got a lot of trigger warnings in it. I would say don't read it unless you're fully ready to because it's a book that's going to stick with you a while and not in the best way, if you get know what I'm saying. It's a dark one. In this book, we follow a character named Shay, and Shay's, you know, has your typical kind of suburban life. She's married to a husband, she lives in Texas, she's got kind of the single mom life going on, and she listens to this true crime podcast, and she's listening to it one day, and she, le she learns that her best friend, um, is found dead at her old college campus and she's like oh no laurel that's her name um and the person that actually runs the podcast is somebody that shay went to high school with so she knows him and she's like no because her shay and laurel were in a cult in college and they were the only two that managed to escape it and they promised to like never go back to new york again never go back to that college and now laurel is found dead at the college so she reaches out to her friend that runs the podcast and she's like hey let's investigate this because something is going on somebody murdered her i know it and so they start investigating it and it gets into darker and deeper things so it's a book about cults for sure um it's a lot to do with the sexual abuse um it's got a lot of um, rape in it like just so many trigger warnings on it cults emotional abuse um it's got a lot to deal with like kind of religious cults if you will which is you know it's, it's intense it's for sure it's an intense book like it's a book that you're just gonna be like whew i'm kind of happy i'm done reading this because it was heavy overall though four and a half maybe five out of five because it just stuck with me so much and how impactful it was it really touches on the idea of men and women especially in religious cults how men kind of view women as just objects and not people it's horrible but it's the reality of a lot of cults even today honestly which is just scary and how they get to pit people in cults and all of those many things and you get to go back in time to see Shay as she gets involved with this I did really enjoy it I did enjoy her other book a little bit more I'm not gonna lie because that was really a murder mystery this one's much more darker and sinister and kind of more realistic with this realities of today sadly so I really enjoyed it just be ready to read it whenever you so do there you have my thoughts on 10 books that I read this month I'm very happy to have read them and I'm very happy going into September because this is my season I'm ready to get into some kind of paranormal cozy also thrillers I'm just ready to read them all okay I'm just really ready my list for this year for this season to read is really really long so I need to get into it so I'm hoping September October November are gonna treat me well reading wise I would love to know what books you read this month do we read any of the same and I would love to know your feelings on them as always thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye